Hello and welcome to Katrina's Creations. This is episode 201. Yes, we hit a milestone last week. We did a giveaway and that winner has been sent her yarn. So what's next? I've got a bunch of different events and giveaways and stuff coming up in the next couple of months. So make sure you stick around for later in the video because I will tell you about them. Uh, if you haven't already, please click that little red subscribe button. And if you click the little bell icon next to it, don't just click the bell, but you'll see a little window open up. Click the all notifications. Otherwise, you will not get notified whenever I post a video. You have to enable the notifications bell. Um, more about that. Also, later on, I took a class on YouTube and learned a few things. So. Let's get started with my finished objects. I am very excited. I'll show you why. First off, I have finished another hat. This is the Stormy Waters hat. There is a tutorial, not by me, but by the lady who did it, um, who designed the hat. So this is for the hats for a local elementary school that um, my yarny friends and I are working on. And our schools here in Pennsylvania are open at this point. Um, now the schools where I work down in Maryland are doing all online learning, but um, yeah, the schools up here are open. So we will be getting these ready to give out to children for the winter. But my other finished object is my baby blanket. It's not a blanket. It's also not a baby layette. Last week, I was afraid I was going to run out of yarn. I did. I literally ran out of the fuzzy yarn one row before the end, and the other yarn that was a, um, it's a micro acrylic by Carlton, which they don't make anymore, or at least if they do, I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, I literally had, the, I did the last stitch, and there was this much yarn. Talk about playing yarn chicken. I had just enough to tie a knot and weave it in. So how did how big did it turn out? It is not a baby blanket. It is not a baby layette. We are going to call it, and it does make sense, a baby car seat cover. So here it is. Its final measurement is about 25 or 26 inches by about 20 inches. But it actually will work perfect for a car seat cover. So here is the pattern. It is a shell stitch at the top, and then it goes into a few rows of double crochet. So I really think it's pretty, and with the white, it just looks so lacy. And they don't know if they're gonna have a little boy or a little girl. So that's why they asked me to go with a neutral color. But I think this is perfect for car seat cover. And then these I did not finish this week. These I finished the other week, but they will be going with it. These are the little alpaca booties. Oops, his ear is tipped. Curly alpaca, apparently. Curly alpaca ears. There we go. How cute. I need adult-sized ones. And they are extremely soft because these are made out of 100% alpaca. So these will be getting sent to her parents. They do know now that she is expecting. The cat is out of the bag. So I'm safe in just sending these to them. So um, yeah, that will be going on later this week. This will get sent out so that they can enjoy them and have them ready for their first grandchild. So that is my finished objects this week. Now let's move on to my works in progress. I have done quite a bit with my crocheted sweater. This is the third skein and this is all I've got left. Not much of it left. I think this is like the final green because it is a striped. This is called Sunday Stripes. It is homespun by Lion Brand. And here it is. Like I said, I'm in a green section. And I am I'm only like two or three rows from separating uh, for the sleeves because I want I could wear this at this length 
it would come to about the top of my hip bone, but I would like it a little bit longer in case I want to wear it with pants. Skirts are like a little bit shorter. I don't like like tunic length with a skirt. I think it looks goofy. Um, but I do like a little bit longer with a pair of pants to help cover the hips. So we're going to go with a happy medium, kind of between the two. So I need, in order to do that, I need to have like 17 to 18 inches in this length. And I am right now at about 16 and a half. So not too much more to go. And then I will be splitting for the sleeves. Now here's where I'm going to have to be really careful. And this will be the same whether I was knitting or crocheting this. Because I don't want the stripes on the front not to match the stripes on the back. Because when I hook it back together, it's going to look funny. So I'm going to have to, um, I might grab two new skeins. And actually the way this is working out, by the time I finish this, it might be at the right length. I will get two separate skeins to do the do one skein with the front and one skein with the back so I can keep the color runs going together so that the stripes line up right. So I'm just going to have to be really careful with that and count my rows um, because that, that would just look kind of weird. I don't want it to look like, oh, what a shame, you know, I want it to look nice. So there it is. It does sadly fit me. It looks huge. It is huge, but it fits. So, um, Next, I will be doing under the arm, like I said, under the arms, splitting, and I might have to take it in, you know, because I'm, I'm wider here than I am in my shoulder. So I will be doing some decreases in the arm section here because I don't think I really want it hanging off my shoulders. I'd prefer it to be up at my shoulder bone. So, um, yes, so there it is. And let me show you how far I've gone this week. There you can see my stitch marker from last week. So that is probably about seven inches, which doesn't sound like much, but when you think of the width it's having to go around, it's quite a bit. So, um, yes, that is my sweater progress. Next, I have the next hat that I am working on, and I am just about done. I thought I was going to finish this. I was in a meeting, and I was doing the decreases to the hat, and realized that the body of the hat was not long enough and it was going to be entirely too short unless it was for a toddler. These are for elementary school aged kids. So I ripped back and um, I ripped, I thought I lost the stitch marker at first. Um, so I ripped back and I made it a little bit longer. I am now doing the decreases at the top of the hat. So here it is. This is the same yarn that this is from. Um, it's from a project that was ripped out a few, a few years ago that has just been languishing on the shelves back here. So, um, it's very soft. I don't know what it is. I think it's acrylic. Um, I'm hoping it is, doesn't have wool other poor person. If it's got wool in it and the poor person doesn't know it and they wash it, um, they might have a doll sized hat by the time they're finished. So I don't think it's wool. I think it is acrylic. It is a single single ply as you can see here so it's not it's there's no plying to it it's just the one ply um and it's slightly fuzzy and i like the way i like the way it crochets up and knits up and i love this color in it this kind of aqua color against the blue i just think it's really pretty that's what kind of drew me to this yarn to begin with because i just liked the color contrast so that is my knit project. Actually, I have two knitted projects going on right now um, because I finished my other crochet project, which was the hat. And I think my next crochet hat, because I'm doing one knit, cro one knit hat, one crochet hat, one hit that, one the say that fast three times, one knit hat, and then I'm doing one crochet hat just to change it up a little bit. I think I want to try, try one of, I'm really having a hard time talking today. I think I want to try one of Bag O Day's hat patterns. So if there's one that you recommend, please let me know down below. Now the next thing, this is my last work in progress, which I'm very excited about. This is a new design that I am working on. It is a cowl. The yarn that I have that I am using, and here it is. And it has sparkles in it, which are not showing up a whole lot, but maybe it'll show up on the cowl. 
This is from Appalachian Sock Company. That is Ann Garver, who you will who you will see in show and tell. She does the socks on the vintage sock knitting machine. This is some of her hand dyed. It was called I Fell in Love with a Swamp Monster. <laughs> but I love the colors because it, cause it's got turquoise in it. But um, yes, again, it's that turquoise and it even has not deep blues in it, but it's, it's pretty. And then I combined it with another one of her yarns, which was just a solid gold color. So here's my design pattern. And I've like doubled the size this was last week. So you can see it has, let's see if I can open this up some, it has spiral pieces in here going, going this direction. And then it has diagonal lines that match it. So there it is. I'm not quite finished. I have another one of these sections to go and then the end section down here and then it'll be done. It used very, very little of the gold because you basically are just doing one round on it. So I roughly had like six, six rows. That's all I used of the gold. So I have plenty of it left over. Now here's my question for you guys. Um, this is a pattern that I am designing. So I always knit it a second time and test the pattern as I'm going to make sure it looks like it's right and to make sure it makes sense. So I have two different yarns and I want you guys to tell me which one I should do for the next pattern of it. I have this, which is also another yarn by Appalachian Sock Company. It says Appalachian Fibers on it, but it's Appalachian Sock Company is, is the, um, um, it's the, the same person. Um, the sock or the, the yarn is Appalachian Fibers, but the actual where she makes the socks is Appalachian Sock Company. It is a BFL, which is a blue face lister. It's a type of wool and it's 80% BFL and 20% nylon, which is what your common sock base is, is an 80-20 mix. This is a super wash, which means it's been treated so it can go through the washing machine. It's 400 yards or 100 grams. And does it have a colorway? I don't see a color listed on it. Okay, but here it is. And the reason I, if I do this one, it's going to go with the gold because as you can see, it has kind of the same gold right here. Oops, I'm getting it off screen right here. You can see that same color gold. So that's option one to make the cowl a second time. Or I have this one, which is called Packa Peds HT. HT stands for heels and toes because it's the Alpaca Yarn Company. And what they do, if you can see this, where is it at, right here, this gray right here, that's actually a mini skein that they just have it twisted together here. The H and T is heel and toe. So you do the, the sock with the main color and then you can do the heel and toes with a contrasting color um, or coordinating color, which they put in here. I mean, there is gray in the yarn, which you can see right there. And this is a really pretty forest green color, kind of a tonal forest green. And then it has the gray. So this would be option number two. So let me know which one you think I should do for the second test knit, option one or option two. So, I mean, eventually I'll do them both, but which one should I do? So let me know in the comments down below which one you think I should do. So that being said, let's take a look what you all have been making this week.
Now, I told you earlier in the video that I took a YouTube class this week. Um, through my work, I have to, on the days, once in a while when I have to work from home, we have to do online classes. One of the online classes was on understanding YouTube analytics. In other words, how people are, it helps you to understand who is watching your channel, where they're from, how best to address your audience, where your weak points are. There's all kinds of analytics themselves on the channel that you can check out. So I went ahead and took the class and I learned that the majority of people who watch the, the channel are from the United States, which I knew. I was surprised at what state in the United States the majority of people watch from. The answer is Texas. I did not know that. I mean, I know a lot of you are from Texas. I know uh, Pam is from Texas. I know Adele is in Texas. Adele lives in the in San Angelo, which is where my mother was born. Um, there's some of you, Pam and some others of you live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which is where my my father's sister and her family live. So I have an aunt and uncle and cousins and their children down in the Fort Dallas-Fort Worth area. I know Ren is from Texas. And am I missing anybody? Those are the ones I know of, but I know there's other people. So hello, Texas. The second most watched state, or the second most what? The second state that watches the most, we'll say it that way, is Ohio. Yay, Ohio. My son lives in Ohio, so we got to love Ohio. Um, and I know that uh, Tina and Tina Brenning and Diane both live in Ohio. And there's some others of you who live in Ohio, too. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I also learned that um, apparently my introductions are too long uh, because <laughs> I could watch when the time drops as far as watch time drops. And there's a there's a drastic drop during my little intro with the pretty music. I like my pretty music, but apparently it's maybe too long. So I might be adjusting that slightly. Uh, we'll see. It might take me a while to get around to getting that done. But um, yeah, apparently that's where I'm losing a lot of people. It's maybe just a tad bit too long. So I learned that. And I also learned some information about notifications. Now, a while back, several of you told me that you have not been getting notifications that I have put a video out. Okay, the first thing to remember, I always put a video out on Saturday on, on, and on Wednesday. So whether you get a notification or not, always look for them because they're always there. But I have been telling you guys to, you know, click the subscribe button and click the little bell-shaped icon next to it. That part's correct. What I was neglecting to tell you <laughs> is that when you click that little bell-shaped icon, a little window drops down with some options. You want to click the one that says All Notifications. Click on that, and then you will get notifications from me. You have to apparently enable your device to send you notifications. Now, you will not get email notifications because YouTube did away with that, but you will get notifications on YouTube itself. So. To try to explain what I'm talking about, it's easier to show you. So I'm actually going to do just a tiny couple, like a minute worth of tutorial, just to tell you, show you where to click and where to look for your notifications on YouTube. Okay, so I'm going to stick that in now. All right, here is the subscribe button. It's right to the right of the, of the video screen. And... I'm going to click subscribe. Now right beside the bell icon, you can see it right here, I'm clicking on it, you can see it drops down. It says all, personalized, or none. You want to click all. That way you'll know when anything gets posted. Now the place you will know is when you look up here, in your YouTube screen, this is the place where your picture is. This is also a little bell. 
if it has a little red circle, that means you've got notifications. And if you click on that notifications bell up here, it'll open up and there are different videos. You can just click directly on the video and it will take it take you to that. Like if I click there, it's going to open up a whole new screen and take me directly to that video. So that is how the notifications are working now. I think it's always great when you learn something from a class. So many times I take online classes and it's like, okay, that didn't apply. This one really did. I actually am going to put this to good use. So the next thing, I ran across a new channel. Well, I mean, she doesn't have a new channel, but it's new to me. I stumbled across it in the recommended videos. I happened to run across it, so I looked at it. It was really, really good. Uh, her name is, it's TL Yarn Crafts. She's not a small channel. She's as large as Secret Yarnery. So she has a very large channel, it's like 166,000 subscribers. But what I liked on her channel, not only does she have some crochet, it's a crochet channel, by the way, it's not knitting, it is crochet pattern. She, or, it is crochet, it's not knitting. But even if you're a knitter, you would enjoy some of the stuff she does because she does yarn reviews of your big box yarns. And she knits them up. I was watching one that was on some different um, yarn she had gotten from Lion Brand. And she actually crocheted, I said knit it again. I always get them interchangeable. She crocheted some swatches and then she compared and she told you what she thought of it. You got to see what it looked like when it was crocheted up. And then she would give it a rating of hooks. She used crochet hooks. And if it was really good, she gave it 10 hooks. If it was, you know, a mediocre, it got a five to six hooks. She told you what she liked about the yarn and what she didn't like about the yarn. So I really enjoyed that. And I thought it was informative because there was some yarn she was she was doing from, from Lion Brand that I was interested in. And she really didn't give it that great of a review. She said it was kind of rough. You know, it wasn't something you wanted up against your face. So um, that was very handy to know. So anyway, go over and check out her channel. I just thought it was interesting. She also has crochet patterns. And um, like I said, I really enjoyed the yarn review that I watched. So I need to do a little binge watching there and get caught up on some of her stuff. So here is my next big announcement. Um... Those of you who have been with the channel for a while know that last year, Sarah Oliver of Sock TV, that's Sarah Oliver Crochet and Knits, um, she and I teamed up and did a holiday along. We're doing it again this year. Yes. So those of you who are new to the channel, let me explain what it is because it's a ton of fun. And this was Sarah's idea. I cannot claim any of it. Um, we have team knit, team crochet, that part of it, there's no prizes involved. It's just strictly fun and you can be on both teams. Okay. What it is, she comes up with a map. Last year, she followed the map of around the world in 80 days from the uh, Jules Verne book. She followed that travel pattern and she assigned a certain amount of yardage to mileage. And each week, she would send me the information. We One channel, her channel would do like the knit, knit progress, and mine would do the crochet. And then the next week, we would switch it up. But we would track how far total yarn, yarnage, <laughs> yardage had been accumulated for team crochet that week and for team knit that week and where they were on the actual travel to get from where she lives, which is Glasgow, Scotland, to where I live, which is Pennsylvania in the United States. So it was a lot of fun last year. We had a blast. The crocheters won. Um, and we just had, we had tons of fun. It was fun to see how far we as a group could, could get mileage wise with yarn. So um, like I said, you can participate in both. If you are a crocheter and a knitter, you can do both because if that part of it is more just for fun. We do a big show and tell at the end of each month. 
you can submit your pictures onto a Facebook group, which is, it has been set up, and but we're not going to actually open it to people until it actually starts, because we don't want to have people submitting stuff ahead of time. Um, but I will let you know it's going to start October 1st. So the last week in September, you can start joining in into the Facebook group. If you don't do Facebook, that's fine. You can just send an email to me um, at Katrina's Creations at Yahoo.com. Give me your picture and your information, and we'll get you entered that way. Because we don't want to leave anybody out. It's tons of fun. So, um, yes, we will get started with it, uh, like I said, in October. And I will try to send invites out to all the people who are my friends over on Facebook. Um, but yeah, if I miss you, let me know. But you won't be getting that till the end of September. Like I said, I don't want anybody to jump in and start submitting stuff ahead of time. So what is the holiday along? It's, it's a just, it doesn't even have to be holiday related items. Okay. It's just a knit along, crochet along, doing your, doing your crafts that you are doing, your different projects. And you just, uh, let us know. Uh, what the weight of yarn is that you've used, and approximately, we're not talking science here or anything, just to get a, a rough guesstimate of how much yarn you've used. Everybody submits their pictures, and at the end of the month, like I said, we show pictures of everybody's projects. It runs from October 1st until the end of the year. So it runs for three months, October, November, and December. And like I said, each month it will, we will show all of your photos. We tried doing it, showing all of the pictures at the end of the year one time, and it just was entirely too long. I think it was like almost an hour long when I did it. Uh, so we're not going to do it that way. We're going to do it at the end of each month. And then at the end of December, Sarah on her channel will draw a prize, and I will draw a prize on this channel. So um, that is one giveaway that's going to be going on. And like I said, it's a lot of fun. We all had a blast with it last year. So that is going to be the Holiday Along 2020. We also have my Podiversary, my four-year Podiversary, coming up at uh, October 22nd. And so there will be a giveaway related with that one, too. So we have lots of giveaways coming up. So make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you are a subscriber. Now it's time for... Now my come and get it section this week is going to be relatively short because most of my, I end up putting out several videos during the week for Lion Brand because they are running sale after sale after sale lately. And I never know about them. They're always flash sales. I find out the day they're doing it. So as far as Lion Brand goes, I will just let you know, watch it in the Facebook uh, or if it's something I really think is good, I just put it through YouTube. Um, so just be watching for them. Uh, the Dollar Tree still has its premier, premier yarns on sale for a dollar a piece. Um, that's not really on sale. They're always a dollar a piece. Uh, but they still have them available. You do need to buy a, a case, which is, I think, for the most part, like six or eight skeins. Um, you can order it and then pick it right up at the store and pay no shipping. So that is Dollar Tree. The links to all the sales are down below, and I do get a very small commission out of any of the sales. So if you buy through that link, it helps support the channel and the giveaways and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Leisure Arts. I thought they've got a ton of baby patterns over there right now and in the knit and the crochet sections. So since I just made a baby booties and a baby car seat cover because I ran out of yarn, but it sounds so good that way. Anyway, a baby car seat cover. It's much better than saying it's small because I ran out of yarn. Anyway, they have lots of baby items over in the crochet and the knitting section. Annie's. Annie's. Pretty, pretty patterns. They have just released their fall crochet collection. Now, I didn't see a fall knit collection. I thought they had one, too, because I bought stuff. I bought stuff from their signature collection before. Um, in fact, I just recently bought some things from their their signature collection. 
but I don't think they have a fall collection for knitting. But they do for crochet. And some of those patterns are extremely gorgeous. There is actually, um, if you remember, I bought a cro or I bought a knit pattern for a, a swancho, which is like a, a poncho with sleeves. They have one in it that's very, very similar. I thought it was the same pattern until I looked a little bit closer and realized it's a crochet version. It's another name, um, but it's in it's in their fall collection. So I will put a link down below if you want to go over and check out their, their fall collection. They have some really, really pa pretty patterns this year. Sometimes they're like, eh, but this time I really liked them. And then Knit Picks has, apparently modular blankets are coming back in. You know, a few years ago, it was all the rage. Everybody was making mitered square blankets with the knitting. And they were making the little Battenberg, basically, they call them Battenberg, or blank, Battenberg blankets basically little mini granny squares um, that were in like white with another color, variegated. I don't know why they called it that, but anyway, they did. I guess because the white part of it looked like Battenberg lace. They were granny squares. Just a fancy name for them. But anyway, apparently that popularity is coming back. I've heard numerous people talk about it. I've had some people ask me some questions about mitered square uh, about my mitered square blanket. I do have a tutorial on how to do the knitted miter square blanket. If you click right there, that'll take you over to it. Um, but Knit Picks uh, has a several modular blankets. They're calling them modular. They're, some of them are mitered. Some of them look like quilts, but they're actually knitted. Um, so I will put the link to that down below. And then Knit Picks also has like a, a sister part of the site because knit picks is definitely more knit related then there's one called we crochet which is the same company you can get back and forth to them on the same site they sell the same yarn and everything but they we crochet is more the crochet side of it so i went over to we crochet and there is a separate link down below so you don't have to like try to figure out how to get from knit picks to we crochet i put a separate link down there and they have um, block and scrappy blankets as well. So um, I'll put the link to that page down below too, so you can go over and check it out. So it's apparently that fad is coming back. So that is it for this week. Wednesday's video, Knit Picks, is it, or not Knit Picks, Knit Crate is arriving. It is in New Jersey as I film this. So it will definitely be here for Wednesday. Apparently, they're getting back on track with the, with the, um, the shipping and things. I know there for a while, for a couple of months there, it was like, well, by the time we got the, the, we would order at the beginning of the month and it would take us till the end of the month to get the yarn because it was sitting on the runway at the airport waiting to be shipped to us. But because of everything going on in the world, everything was getting pushed behind. So um, it looks like maybe they're back on track. So that should be arriving this this week. And I completely forgot what I ordered. So I'll be as surprised as you are. <laughs> I honestly cannot remember what I put the order in for. So um, yeah. Anyway, we'll we'll find we'll find out together. <laughs> My memory's slipping. I don't remember. Oh, that's gonna drive me crazy. I'm gonna have to go in and peek because I don't remember what color I ordered. I don't know. Anyway, uh, yes, because Knit Crate, you have a choice. You can be surprised. That's called the Anything Goes. Or you can choose your color. They kind of give you a preview a little bit ahead of time, and then you can put your order in for which color preference you have. And I put a color preference in, and now I don't remember what I did. Oh, well, yeah, that's scary. Anyway, je ne sais pas, which means... In French, I do not know. I took two years of French when I was in high school, and I remember very, very little of it. The only thing I do remember is je ne sais pas, because that means I do not know. If you didn't know the answer, you had to at least reply in French, je ne sais pas. I had that phrase down and still have it down really well. And it sounds so much nicer than going, oh, well. So anyway, yeah, there it is. Je ne sais pas. So we'll be surprised together. <laughs> so that is it for this week. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you again on Wednesday. Bye, everybody.